Hi gang, this is the Faraday motor. It's a fun simple experiment you can do using household parts. It was the very first electric motor ever made and was demonstrated by Michael Faraday in 1821. I'll show you how to build it and then explain how it works. So here are all the parts. I've got some wires here with alligator clips on the end. There's my magnets. It's a stack of neodymium magnets that I'm using. And uh, this one right here is just a ceramic magnet and the only purpose of that is uh, just so I can sit it down like that and it'll stand up. Got some paper clips, uh, three paper clips, and uh, I just hook them together in a chain so that they can flop around fairly easily, move around. Uh, you do want to make sure they're fairly clean, just metal contacting metal. So I sanded the insides of them. 9 volt battery. Piece of aluminum foil, doesn't have to be very big. Got a jar. And on top of the jar, I simply put some tape, any kind of tape will do. And then a glass of salt water. Oh, and we can't forget the uh, copper. I've got uh, two pieces of copper here. Solid, uh, strong copper. And uh, I've sanded them so they're all clean with no oxidation or garbage on them. One of them I've made uh, fairly short. You'll have to size it appropriately. And I just bent a little hook at the top of it. Okay, to assemble it all, I first take my stack of magnets and lower them into the cup. Oh. Next I'll take my long copper wire. It doesn't have to be copper, it can be any kind of metal as long as it's conductive and clean. You want metal touching metal all the time. Make sure there's a little bit sticking out right here. Take the uh, chain of paper clips and just hang them down near the end of the metal wire and try to center them over the magnets. Next take the, uh, the short or copper that has the hook in it. You do want this to be copper. You don't want it to be something that will attract to a magnet. So if it attracts to a magnet, don't use it. If it doesn't then, and it's metal, then it's okay. Now one thing I notice is that my copper wire goes down too low and touches the bottom of the magnet. So to fix that, I'm just going to put a block of wood under here. And that lifts that whole thing up. And again, I'll make sure it's nice and centered. Next, I'll take my piece of aluminum foil and just give it a little fold to make it a little stronger. I'll lower it into the glass so that it's well inside the uh, salty water. And then I'll just fold it over. That way it'll hold on fairly well. Give it a nice tight hold there. And I'll take uh, one of the um, leads here, one of the wires, clip this end to the end of the wire that's sticking out over here. I'll take the other clip and I'll simply clip it onto the aluminum foil. And we're all set to go. Take the battery, hook one end to one end of the battery, connect the other end to the other end of the battery. Oops. So it'll hold. And there you can see it's working. Here's how it works. The battery makes electrons flow through the circuit. In the glass, the electrons move from the copper wire that's hanging down and free to move through the salty water to the aluminum foil. That causes electrons to flow along the wire. You can use the right hand rule to figure out what happens next. Point your thumb in the opposite direction that the electrons are moving, downward in this case, Point your index finger, also called your pointing finger, in the direction of the magnetic field as shown, and make your middle finger stick out at right angles to both of those. The middle finger indicates the direction of the force that the wire will experience. As you see, this is just the direction the wire is moving when on the right, as shown in the diagram. It moves outward from the diagram towards you. As an exercise, use the right hand rule this way to confirm that the force will always cause the wire to rotate around the magnet. Note that we're talking about what happens to the wire in the magnetic field near the top of the magnet. Lower down, the wire is largely parallel to the magnetic field, and in that case there's little or no force experienced. The force happens when the direction of electron flow is at right angles or perpendicular to the magnetic field, like it is near the top. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure and check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more fun science and tech videos. That includes one about how to make an electroscope, how to make solar cells using transistors, and how to make a crystal radio, and many more. 
and be sure to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!